Well, Wani, you say you've been holding on to the screenplay for the angry black girl and her monster since 2018, and it was getting rejected a lot. Can you take us through the full journey of the script? Uh, I mean, like, I mean, it's one of those, it's a, I guess it's a classic Hollywood story, you know, <laughs> you know, where the script is kind of making the rounds and people are just like, no, nah, I'm good. Uh, you know, and they're just passing on it, you know, so it was just kind of years of, uh, of dealing with that until finally, you know, Crypt TV read it and engaged. Were they giving you any notes? Who? Uh, the people that were passing on it? No. <laughs> no notes. They just said, it's a pass. That's, yeah. that's all you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that was it. Uh, they don't really, I mean, I, I guess I can't blame people for that. It's like, do you have time to, like, give a docket? You, you know, it's like, if you don't even feel like the script's worth engaging on, why would you give any, like, notes? I guess. I mean, I, I'm not an executive, so I don't know. How are you getting the script out for people to read? Um, it was mainly my manager. He was the one kind of pushing it out there. Um, and I did get like meetings, you know, but they were kind of like, it was one of those things where they're like, oh, we, because uh, the people who liked the script, they were like, yeah, we like this script, but we want you to write something else for us because we like the script. So it was like, it was really weird. I don't know how that happens, but you know, whatever. So they didn't necessarily want this script, but they liked your style. They liked your storytelling and they said, please do something else. And yeah. you, your answer was? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think with someone I am, um, I pursued it for a little while, but you know, it kind of just fell apart. You know, yeah, there was like, there was like two projects that kind of just fell apart, you know? Um, I think one of them was wrapped up in an adaptation of some, uh, some comic book that like the, the, the writer of the comic book, like the rights to it went back to him and they didn't feel like engaging with them anymore and so then you know my script kind of just went away because now they don't have the rights and yeah so it was just like there was just like stories like that what year did crypt tv say yes uh it was 2020 i believe okay so two years it's floating around yeah. you're getting no you're not knowing why interesting yeah how did they let you know they had interest in the script uh my manager called me and was like yo, uh, there's this company. <laughs> He's like, can you make the movie for X amount or whatever, you know, for micro budget or whatever. And I was like, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say no to that. You know, it's like, so um, he was like, all right, well, you know, they want to meet with you, you know, have like a general conversation, you know, so she's going to call you at this time on this day. So be ready to take that call and we'll see where it goes. And I was like, all right. And so they called me and we had like a conversation and then uh, I guess they, they <laughs> I guess she liked me enough, you know, so they set up a, a pitch meeting for uh, for them, you know, for the movie and like, you know, then I pitched them and then I guess they took to that too. So and here we are. So then you actually did have a meeting where you're like pulling onto the lot and. Okay. Yeah, well, Zoom because COVID. But ah, yeah, okay. so I was kind of just walking them through my PowerPoint. Yeah. What went into your pitch? Um, it was a couple things. It was just like, you know, uh, the vibe and the style of the story, how I want to tell it. Um, it was also like, I cut together a little sizzle reel of just like a bunch of different uh, movies together to kind of give them a vibe of just like the moment of bringing, you know, the, the creature back to life. and. Um, with like music to kind of give the official tone that I'm, I'm looking for here. Um, and what else was in that pitch? Um, yeah, it was just in general, just like about the movie, like how I, how I envisioned the movie uh, and walking them through, uh, through that, through every step of just like the story itself to, you know, the style of acting, to the style of editing, to the style of, um, of the music and uh, what I'm trying to capture, and then like movie references of the people who I felt like uh, movies that were closest to it that I wanted to capture. And were they giving you feedback or they were just listening and then the feedback came later? Feedback as in like, we hate this or we like this. <laughs> or we want more of this. Can, yeah. we, can, we, can we ramp this part up? Nah, they were just kind of like, 
they, you know, they asked me like some kind of questions. I, I forgot exactly what they asked me, you know, it wasn't, I mean, I don't want to say it wasn't important, but it's like in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't. They were just kind of like, you know, they just had certain questions about uh, things on a bad way, but they were just kind of inquiring more about stuff. And then, um, and yeah, that was like, that was kind of it. They didn't really say any criticism, I guess, because they liked the pitch, so. And then once you pitched them, how soon did you hear back that it was a go? Um, they started engaging pretty quickly after that, y you know, um, uh, cause I heard from my manager and my lawyer, you know, it's like they kind of started sending deal points, you know, so like, uh, they started engaging pretty quickly. And so you're like, this is really happening. Yeah. It was weird because I don't know, like people talk about the waves of like, I guess happiness or whatever, like when you're trying to make a movie. And like at this moment, you shouldn't like, it, I'm not gonna say it doesn't mean shit, it does, you've gotten to another level. But technically speaking, in the grand scheme of making a movie, when someone options your script or whatever, you know, it's just like, it doesn't really, it means something, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't mean shit. Like, you know, it's like it can, it can all still fall apart pretty quickly. You know, people get their scripts optioned all the time and it doesn't go anywhere and then like it falls apart. But for me, <laughs> nothing ever felt as good as that moment. And, you know, obviously this movie's doing a lot of crazy stuff as of right now, you, you, you know, um, that's not to shit on the other moments. I still had a great time, but for whatever reason, the height of the excitement hit a really hard, like uh, it went really high for that moment. Cause I was like, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> Do you think the trajectory of your script was common? Do you think that all the ups and downs, all the no's, you think mm -hmm. that's just what every screenwriter goes through? I mean, it fucking sounds like it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, cause every story when I was like uh, watching and listening and looking up to other filmmakers that I love, like seems like that was like the, uh, a common thing, you know, people just being like, yeah, you hear no a lot. So like, feels like that's part of it. feels pretty cliche to me, like, <laughs> you know, but when you're going through it, you know, you don't think about that, or at least I didn't. Have you always been more of a realist? Um, with outcomes, I get, I mean, I, I, I can't deny I do have some idealism to me with things on how I want to do stuff. I think, I mean, I think you kind of have to, right? Like, uh, that's what having a vision for something is. And that's not just even saying as a director, it's like, even when you're writing something or whatever, it's just like what you want the story to be on the page, but you know, it might come out different, but you still have a vision, which means there's like idealism in that. Right. Um, but with uh with other things you know I, I i think there's some realism approaches that i because i mean i wrote another script while i was right waiting so it's not like i was just like this is my only one and it's gonna happen and you know it's like i was just like well it might not so and i need to have more than one idea so i'm writing another one that came to me as well ultimately why did the buyers choose your script um i wish i knew <laughs> i i can uh, there's only like certain data or like slight information I hear from them that makes me uh, think that has something to do with it. I mean, they, I think they think is an original idea that they believed in and it was in the same vein of the type of stuff that Crypt was making, uh, as well as they also tell me that they really loved my pitch. Uh, and I think they liked me, at least I hope they do. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I think a combination of those things probably is what took it through the roof because Filmmaking is a, it's a marathon, you know? And I think even if you like an idea and even if you like a pitch, when you're dealing with someone for, I mean, 2020, we engaged, movie finished in 2022, right? Like that's two years, right? And it's like, and if you don't like them, like <laughs> I can only imagine it'll make these other two parts, uh, you liking the idea and uh, the pitch or whatever, like difficult and be forgotten because you're dealing with someone that you don't like. so. I, I hope that I was, <laughs> you know, I can only hope that, so. And when most people get a job, they never ask them, why did you choose me? You yeah, know? yeah, exactly, so. <laughs> Maybe in a relationship, but yeah, yeah not, not, not for a job. <laughs> yeah, but. yeah. How much script work did you have to do before the movie was made? Once they said yes, were they giving you notes, revisions? Yeah, I mean, I had, they had their notes for uh, the draft that came in that they were, you know, that we were engaging with. 
so they had their round of notes that I did. Uh, then they took that out and then like, um, then as we were leading up to production, then we were kind of going through uh, notes, uh, like as we were leading up to production, just because I think, you know, once the, once it's about to happen, you know, you start looking at it with a more scrutinizing eye. So all of us were kind of just, you know, dialing in, giving notes on it and, you know, trying to make it the best possible version it can before we enter production. Because once you start putting it on film or on digital or whatever, it's like, that's it. <laughs> you know, so it's like you want to go in with a, with your strongest foot forward. Were there any revisions while you were filming? Did they say, you know what, can we change this line of dialogue? Not really. I don't think we had time or money. It's like the resources were slim, so. Um, of course, there's like when you're filming that you adapt, you know, of course there were changes because we're in a location now, we have actors now who, you know, who are saying things and doing things and you might be like, oh, this is actually working better without X, you, you, you know, so that will happen. But as far as just being like, oh, rewrite this or whatever, none of that happened. What advice do you have for screenwriters who say that selling a screenplay is impossible? Ooh. <laughs> it's not impossible. Uh, I'll say that uh, because I'm sitting here now and I was watching y'all's videos looking for advice. So uh, it's wild to me that I'm sitting here right now talking to you. So. I think that it's not impossible. Uh, I think it's, 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 it's definitely probable and it's achievable. I did it. And I know that sounds cliche, but I'm, I'm telling you, like I said, this is really meta for me. Like I was sitting on the other side watching this videos of this very channel film Courage with people giving advice and stuff like that. And it fucking happened for me. So 